29 years in the Army, 14 installations. You know, I, I'd be lying if I said Fort Bragg didn't, doesn't have a special place in my heart. But uh, Fort Knox also has a special place in my heart. And I will tell you that Fort Knox is one of the best maintained and looking installations. Fort Knox is a jewel. And, you know, just it, I love to get to, to tell that story of Fort Knox when I go someplace. Uh, but I also love to tell the story of the greater Fort Knox community. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jack and Terry Show. Our special guest today is Jim Iacocca. He is president and CEO of Knox Regional Development Alliance, along with Beth Avey, who is the vice president. Jim is also a retired general officer from the United States Army. Jim, welcome to the show. Harry, thanks as always for having me, and it's really good to see you and Jack. Jack's good to see you. Good to see you, Terry. Good to see you, Jim. Uh, Jack, thank you. Good to be here with you. Well, we've had we've had Jim on here and Beth on here a couple of times, more than a couple of times, giving us updates on what's going on. And Jack, I'll tell you what, Jim sends out these, and I know you get these too, these KRDA updates. The November mm -hmm. one was about three pages long. I'm just wondering, when do you think these guys are going to get proactive? I don't know. They just seem to to be hanging back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Terry, I was sitting here thinking. It's a little late for Christmas, but this is almost like having Santa Claus on. When we have yeah, Jim yes. come on, you know, yeah. you just, you look, you said in anticipation, what is he going to tell us about next? Exactly. I agree it with you. It is absolutely a wonderful news every time he comes on. We, we've well, never had anything like it. As far as well, I know, we've never had anything like it. Yeah, I'm certainly not sure I can live up to, uh, to that <laughs> build up, but I certainly appreciate the endorsement. Thank you. Well, let's start off this way, Jim. Jobs for veterans. I know you guys are working in that sector. I saw you over at the Blue Oval SK opening the other day, uh, working with those folks to try to find a way to keep veterans that are retiring here, retiring or getting out of the military. Give them a reason to stay here. The best reason you can think of is a job. Give us a little bit of information on how you guys are approaching that. Sure. So this is one of those things where it's kind of ancillary to some of the things that we do at KRDA. But as you said, Terry, you know, to help the community remain strong and be strong and get stronger, we want to retain that military talent as it transitions, whether it's either through end of tour service or retirement. We want those people to stay here. And the best way to do that is to create good avenues for, for workforce. And this is a case where Beth and I really just make connections uh, to the right people. Um, we're not really involved in a whole lot of day-to-day -day effort for doing it, but we make those connections with the right people. For example, there's some really great people in our community working with Ford Motor Company to, to staff the Glendale plant and other mm -hmm. jobs in the Ford Motor Company, either up in Louisville or out in Kansas City or you know some other places where they might be able to work, but you know, keeping them here in the region is, is our number one cause. And so we've been working with them to understand, you know, we, and we started this months ago, uh, but really again, Ford and their recruiters have been doing the line share of the work. We've just been trying to help and we've connected them with the team at Human Resources Command that runs transition for the entire army to help them have a reach to bring people from not just Fort Knox, but from any place where soldiers transition to, you know, to offer, hey, there's this plant in Glendale that we're building and we'd love to have veteran talent. So mm -hmm. we've connected them with that and they're working on a great plan to share the commonality between the culture in the army and the culture that they're trying to build with that Glendale plant. And that will be a, a, a great thing. And so Ford's done a great job with that. There's a there's a gentleman here in the community named Ryan Smart, who is the lead military and veteran uh, coordinator. And so uh, we, we've met with him. We've connected him with the great folks at USA Cares who help transitioning service members find meaningful work. Uh, and so we're hoping that that connection there between those two teams will be able to get, to get some connections mm -hmm. and some internships going. Um, and then the other thing is the, the companies, the construction companies that are working down in Glendale are looking for military talent. And, and 
we're working with Fort Knox. It's going to happen after the holidays with Fort Knox, um, 19th Engineers, and the construction companies down there at Glendale to be able to talk directly to the engineers on Fort Knox as they transition to hopefully help them find some meaningful work right here with, with a major uh, construction company uh, there. So th those are kind of the things that we're working on to keep military talent here within the community. Uh, we're working with the, the great community partners we have with USA Cares, Ford, and the construction companies down there. You know, another interesting thing in this community, you know, you always have to develop leaders. In a community, you have to develop leaders. In the military, in business, you have to develop leaders, particularly if it's a large organization. Otherwise, you wake up one day, the leader you had is gone, and you don't have any leadership. It's very common in civilian in the civilian world. So one of the things that Beth's doing, I know, is working on working with the community leadership program. And tell us a little bit more about that, if you can, Jim. We know it's a select group of people that want to grow and want to become leaders. Many of them already are. But tell us a little bit more, more about your involvement and her involvement in that. Yeah, so we're really excited that Leadership Hardin County asks us every year to talk to their the, uh, the, the community members that are going through leadership Hardin County to talk about Fort Knox and the impact of Fort Knox on the community. Uh, I've done it once, Beth has done it two or three times now. And so it, it, it's really an opportunity for us to get in front of all those current and future leaders within the community to talk about uh, the connection between Fort Knox and the community and to be able to answer questions on the, the economic impact that Fort Knox has, not only uh, through contracting, but also the, the, the payroll impact, the jobs it creates in the community and everything else. We've also shared, we've also had the opportunity to talk with, with Mead County and, and Mead County Leadership Program as well. So we're excited to, uh, to be able to do that. And we are in the process right now of working with HCAR uh, they're going to develop a little leader program, and um, we are working with them to have a discussion on Fort Knox and have a little Fort Knox day with them as well to, to let the realtors know that go through that HCAR training, mm -hmm. uh, the significance of Fort Knox in the community and being a good neighbor with, with Fort Knox. So we, we're excited about that. And, you know, just as a side note, HCAR is building a whole new website and we've been working with them to have a web page on there of being a community being a neighbor to fort knox and fort knox being a neighbor to you so we're really excited about that collaboration that we have in the community to share that information mm -hmm. yeah the, the real estate board like you just mentioned there they go through a lot of uh, there are a lot of leadership opportunities there i guess is what i'm saying and in a lot in a lot of these nonprofits around here there are leadership opportunities there but a person needs to be trained up to know what the environment's actually like. And that's been our weak area. Honestly, it's been a weak area for years. We'll get a person up to a point where it's time for them to take a leadership role, but they haven't been through, I guess you would say the training or the experience. They may not even know, for example, about Fort Knox. They may have never been on Fort Knox. Fort Knox is a big part of what goes on. So I, that's really great. I didn't know you guys were that involved in that, but I think that's that's an awesome step right there. Well, we're just getting we're just getting started with them, so we're in the nascent stages of developing that program. It's good, but we're, we're excited and we're looking forward to doing it. Another thing that's of interest to the board of realtors and others around here is the property condition disclosure entry. That I I'll let you go into it, but it has to do with some disclosure lines on that document, so people realize that if you purchase a home near Fort Knox, there is going to be noise. You don't want to wake up one day after you already closed the deal and find out it's a lot of noise. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Jim? So, you know, the thing is, folks that have grown up in this community know how loud Fort Knox used to be. And, you know, there are still times when the artillery units are here or a cab unit comes to train, there, there's a good bit of noise. But when the digital air ground integration range opens up, um, in towards the end of 2023, uh, off the intersection of 313 and 65, there's going to be a lot of noise because that's that's a big range uh, that's going to have aircraft 
and ground forces simultaneously conducting operations. There's going to be a lot of noise. And we think it's important to preserve the readiness of the military and the range capability of Fort Knox, that that range can operate seven days a week, 365 days a year as it needs to operate. And uh, it's important, I think, and Fort Knox believes that is, if you're going to buy a house within a certain radius of Fort Knox, you acknowledge the fact that you are buying a house near an active military installation and there will be noise. And, you know, that, that way, if somebody tried, if somebody made, and there'll still be complaints, but, you know, the, the complaint kind of falls a little moot when you say, well, you signed the agreement knowing that you were doing that. So I think it's important just to preserve the capabilities of, of Fort Knox, because we don't want to have that dagger built, the only one east of the Mississippi, to have limited hours due to quiet time. Now, mm -hmm. I let's not be, you know, we've served in the military. We know there's not a lot of training that happens uh, around Christmas time. So nobody's going to get their, their Christmas dinner interrupted with mm -hmm. artillery rounds. Right. But, you know, uh, uh, there are other times of the year where there'll be training. And that's fair. The people should know that. Yeah. Make a purchase. To dip. We uh, we require that now for virtually anything that's negative about a house that you couldn't discover on your own has to be disclosed, and that makes a lot of sense. You got a little bit of Norton in here. You got a clinic right outside of the installation. Uh, and then you have the Fort Knox clinic, which I, I've never been there, but I understand it's a beautiful facility. Bring us up to speed, Jim, on what's going on in that in that area. Yeah. So what's interesting is, you know, the it's uh, it's the Ireland Army Clinic, and you know the clinic used to be run and staffed and concerned by the Army, mm -hmm. but uh, well, I'm not sure. You know, the pandemic pandemic screws up your time. 18 to 24 months ago, maybe even 36 months ago, the Department of Defense said, you know what, we're going to put all clinics and hospitals under the Defense Health Agency, which is a joint organization. So hmm. when it comes to not just Ireland at Fort Knox, but the hospital at, at, at Fort Campbell, the hospital at Fort Bragg, the hospital on an Air Force base or a Navy base, they're hmm. all now managed by the Defense Health Agency. Hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's a change to how things are. And so what we're working with right now, we're working with Fort Knox, we're working with the clinic, we're working with our friends in Congress, and we're working with DHA. Uh, we, we've got a, a, a well-written letter that we're about to send through all those folks. It takes a while to get some of this stuff done right. Uh, to explain the challenges and the requirements that we need at Fort Knox for the current mission set and any potential growth in the mission set. What we don't want to do is just be so far, you know, if there's growth, DHA will have to increase staffing at the hospital. But we want it to be from a good point that's already supporting Fort Knox up, not to catch up and then bring it up. Mm. So that, that's what we're concerned about uh, right now. I mean, the clinic is, is at just about full capacity right now with the units that are at at Fort Knox, and we just want to make sure that the Defense Health Agency is aware of uh, the, the promise and the challenges at Ireland Clinic. The last thing before we uh, give you a chance to give the final word here, Jim, though, is the infrastructure, is, like you just mentioned, if Fort Knox grows, infrastructure requirements grow as well. And so and the key to that is having funding for it. And I know you guys are working hard with the federal representatives to make sure that, that that need is met. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. You know, the Army's got limited resources and they've got all these, these military installations that they need to take care of. And so we work very closely with our friends at, at Fort Knox, and then we work very closely with our congressional delegation. And I will tell you that Congressman Guthrie and Senator McConnell's office have absolutely, their staff and them personally have been absolutely wonderful to work with when it comes to them, we make them directly aware of what the infrastructure requirements and the dollar amounts for those requirements are for Fort Knox. And so as they start working through the ND, the, the, the National Defense Authorization Act and other things, 
they, they can keep a lookout for those specific items uh, that are of interest and requirements for Fort Knox. Yeah, I've watched you guys do some of that, your meetings with the Senator McConnell and others to try to make sure that that they're aware of that. I mean, there's so many things they have to be aware of, but somebody's got to keep keep it on the top of mind and you guys are doing that. Just glad to have uh, the KRDA available to us. It's such a such a great way to learn and and find out what's going on at Fort Knox. And it's sure is. We really appreciate you, Jim. Absolutely. Well, yeah, Jack and Terry, thank you so much for you know those 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 comments, those complimentary comments from KRDA. But I will tell you, you know, as I've, I've said before, it's really a two-way street. Um, this community is very supportive of Fort Knox. This community is very supportive of KRDA, and and I'm grateful for the community members that support KRDA that allow Beth and I to do what we can to support Fort Knox and this this community. Um, you know, and I, I may have said this before, 30, 29 years in the Army, 14 installations. You know, I, I'd be lying if I said Fort Bragg didn't, doesn't have a special place in my heart. But uh, Fort Knox also has a special place in my heart. And I will tell you that Fort Knox is one of the best maintained and looking installations. Fort Knox is a jewel. And, you know, just it, I love to get to, to tell that story of Fort Knox when I go someplace. Uh, but I also love to tell the story of the greater Fort Knox community and what a welcoming and supportive community. No place have I ever been, when I was in uniform, did I ever feel as connected to the community as I did when I was stationed on Fort Knox. This is a great place. And I think sometimes people take it for granted of how wonderful this, how wonderful Fort Knox is and how wonderful this community is. And I'm not blowing smoke, I mean it. I just. You know, it's I have the best job in the whole world. You know, I, right. I, I'm not selling snake oil. <laughs> well, it you know, shows it shows when you're out there talking to folks, it comes across that that is your true feeling about it. And I agree with you. It's a, it's just it is, it is an amazing place, and the relationship, uh, the right now the relationship that the community has with Fort Knox is really off the chart. It's great, and I think you know too that speaks to the quality of leaders we get at Fort Knox. You know. Um, I, I think the army is full of great leaders, but it just seems to me that we get the we get the lion's share, of the cream of the crop here at Fort Knox. When you look at the the general officers, the colonels, the enlisted men and women, the, the sergeants major that we have, the civilians that we have, we just really are blessed to have such great military leaders here at Fort Knox. I absolutely agree with you, folks. That was Jim Iacocum. He is president and CEO of the Knox. Regional Development Alliance, along with Beth Avey, who's doing a great job. She's the vice president of that organization and involved in so many things we couldn't even mention. And Jim is also a retired general officer with the U.S. Army. Jim, thanks for coming on. Well, Terry and Jack, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And Happy New Year and have a great 2023. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Jack, it was good seeing you. And we'll see you again in a couple of days. Good to see you, Terry. Good to see you, Jim. Thank you a lot.